Welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm going to review this, the ASICS Metaspeed Edge, and I'm going to compare it to this, the ASICS Metaspeed Sky. I'm going to stick them on the turntable and review their specifications. Then I'm going to do some running and some analysis. And finally, I'm going to decide which one is the fastest shoe I think I'll run a marathon in. I reviewed the ASICS Metaspeed Sky earlier on in the year, and I'll link it at the end. Um, but ASICS developed one concept and two shoes. They developed the Edge for cadence runners and the Sky for stride runners. And in this video, I'm going to try and find out whether I'm a stride runner or a cadence runner. And then I'm going to try and find out which of these two shoes is the fastest one for me to run a marathon in. Let's put the shoe on the turntable and review its specifications. The shoe is a US 13, EU 48, UK 12 and CM 30.5. The shoe measures 305 millimeters long internally. In this size, it weighs in the left shoe 225 grams or 7.95 ounces, and in the right shoe 229 grams or 8.10 ounces. It has an 8 millimeter drop and a 29 millimeter stack height. Let's have a quick look at what ASICs say about the two shoes. The Metaspeed Sky racing shoe is designed to help runners go faster by extending their stride length considerably. The Metaspeed Edge racing shoe is designed to help cadence type runners go faster by extending their stride length while allowing them to control cadence more easily. Let's do some analysis and see if this is true. The uppers of these shoes are identical. Uh, the difference is in the sole, uh, dare I say it, the sole differences. Um, and in the Edge, what it is, is it's a lower stack height and it's a higher drop. So in the Edge, in, in men's, it's 29 to 21 in terms of the stack height and the drop and in the women's it's 28 to 20 and in the sky it's uh, 33 to 28 all in millimeters and men's and then 31 to 28 in women's so essentially this shoe <laughs> keep juggling them this shoe is uh, four millimeters lower in stack and it has uh, an eight millimeter versus five drop so it's more tilted downwards Usually I do cost at the end, but we've a lot of analysis to get through, so we'll rumble through the cost now. Basically, uh, ASICs make it really simple. It's 250 euro, 250 dollars, or 225 pounds. Except it's not. Uh, uh, I got, because uh, I signed up to ASICs, I think it's one something or others there, ASICs club, signed up to the emails and I immediately got 15%. So I got 15% off the sky. And uh, it's great, I was very pleased with myself. Uh, and you also get better returns policy and I think you actually get to try them for a certain period of time. Um, and then uh, they wanted to wish me happy birthday, so I got 15% off the edge. So this was 212, well they were both 212 euro and 50 cents. So obviously I'd recommend uh, signing up for for, for ASICs and uh, it was really nice to say, wish me happy birthday. <laughs> I saved, I don't know, 37 euro or whatever it was on the shoes. The shoes look the same, but they feel very different. I mean, even picking them up, I can, I can sense the difference. Uh, this is the lighter shoe. Uh, the edge is lighter because there's less foam in it, um, less stag height, less foam. And um, because of that, it's about, I think it's about 11 grams or 0.41 ounces, something like that, uh, lighter. So it's, it's marginally lighter. It's certainly the lightest carbon fiber shoe I have. Um, and as soon as you put it on, you can feel the difference to the, uh, the sky. Um, it feels more like a normal shoe. It's not as much height. Uh, it's uh, got a, a, an eight mil drop. It feels, uh, it feels more normal, at least more normal to me. Uh, this one, on the other hand, feels more bouncy. You're up higher and there's a kind of pronounced that sort of movement in it when, you, when you're just walking in it. So I suppose subjectively, I would think this is quicker, but objectively, well, we have to go and run around and do some analysis. The two shoes are designed uh, for different types of runner. Uh, one who increases their stride and one who increases their cadence. Um, so I wasn't sure which of these I was or am. And so I decided to take out my Clifton 7, which I did last week, and uh, run around the local park uh, for a one kilometer time trial. And so I ran uh, hard and I ran easy and the data is there. <laughs> what you can see in the easy one, I ran 176 steps per minute and my stride length, which I think is critical, is 1.04 meters. And in hard, it was 199 steps per minute and 1.21 uh, meters stride length. These are averages. Uh, and so then you think, right, okay, well, I had expected that the cadence would stay about the same and the stride would increase. That's not what happened. They both increased about the same rate at about 
Okay, so just like last week, uh, some caveats. Uh, this is an inexact science. It's, it's based on a small da data set. Uh, it's relative versus absolute. So I'm just relating one shoe to the other, uh, different days, different conditions, wind, all that sort of stuff. So I try to run the same day in the same shoe. Um, there's a lot of, as I said last week, all things being equal, which they're not. And this is broad brush only. And the one major difficulty is I'm the only lab rat in the building. So, so <laughs> it's, it's only based down to me. So there's certain limitations that that, that has, such as I can't just go out 10, 10 different uh, timed uh, kilometers and, and hope they're all the same. The park run is great, um, but it's uh, some sort of some twists. There's a couple of 90 degree bends. Um, and so whilst ASICs, I'll read out an ASICs uh, detailed statement about these shoes. Uh, I'm gonna read while I run around the park. Uh, you can see a, a time lapse of my timed lapse. Uh, <laughs> and you can check my diction. Right, here we go. The Metaspeed Edge racing shoe is designed to help cadence type runners go faster by extending their stride length while allowing them to change cadence more easily. Cadence type runners change cadence easier as they run faster. Runners wearing these shoes will experience a fast underfoot feel thanks to the energetic midsole foam and a propulsive carbon plate. These components allow them to elongate their stride and conserve more energy while controlling their pace. The Metaspeed Sky racing shoe is designed to help you go faster by extending your stride length. Stride type runners take a longer stride once they start increasing their speed, but their cadence stays the same. Thanks to an energetic midsole foam and propulsive carbon plate, runners wearing these shoes will be able to conserve more energy while maintaining their pace at the later stages of the race. That's the bit I'm critically interested in, but we'll see. As I've said, I'm really interested in, in the difference in the, the cadence and particularly the stride length. Um, I have a natural cadence which seems to be high or, or a pretty good cadence. Uh, 180 steps per minute is, is considered a, a good uh, cadence. I run 176 on the easy runs and 199 on the hard runs on average. The problem, as I've said before, is my short legs. My stride is too short. Uh, so that's why I'm particularly interested in anything that will help me increase the stride length. So let's do some analysis of the shoes. I ran out on Saturday morning for what I call the run and gun. Uh, sprinting. So four sprints, uh, one in the edge, one in the sky, one in the edge, one in the sky. And then what I did was I compared the data. And interestingly, uh, it was exactly the same. The first two sprints uh, were exactly the same in each, each of the shoes. Then I had an idea about improving my technique and the next two sprints were exactly the same, but faster. So I went out at 2.38 uh, per kilometer, or sorry, I didn't go out at, this is the peak I could get to. So 238 per kilometer in the first run, which is 22.78 kilometers per hour, 14.16 mile an hour. And in the second uh, of the second pair of sprints, the third and the fourth sprint, I went at two minutes 30 per kilometers or 24 kph, 14.91 mph. Uh, I'm always, I love going, this is like, this is as fast as I can go for a nanosecond. I come back and, uh, and I say to Michelle, oh, yeah. I went out and I got to 24 kph and uh, she instantly says, like a slow car so so not not particularly impressive and for a nanosecond but in my slow car approach uh, boat shoes went as fast as i could go in them and it was identical so the peak speed uh is i mean i can get up to a nanosecond i'm not elliot kipchoge i can get a nanosecond uh, at that, those sort of paces and it's deceptive because really at that point in time you're sprinting you're probably on your toes so you know, there's not there's not going to be much difference between the two shoes that are largely the same foam, etc. So I decided to go out and do what I call uh, my one kilometer time trial gut busters. So I went out to do some of these. So Saturday morning I did two and then I did two on uh, Sunday morning. And so what I did was on Saturday I went out in the edge uh, after all the sprinting uh, one kilometer hard. And then I rested for about five minutes and then one kilometer hard in the sky. And on the Sunday, I went hard out in the sky first, and then I went hard in the edge, as hard as I could go. Now, I didn't use any particular technique. I didn't try and vary my stride or my cadence or anything. I just tried to go as fast as I could for a kilometer. And uh, I suppose the, the, the most obvious thing, I suppose, was supposed to be obvious, but the first run was faster than the second run in both cases. So the times for the edge for a kilometer was uh, three minutes and 55 seconds in the fastest and three minutes and 58 seconds in the slowest. And then in the sky, it was faster at three minutes 54, but it was also slower at four minutes one. So 
there's not an awful lot of difference in, in those. So I need to delve into the data a bit more or the data. And what I was trying to do was um, I'm trying to compare. I know that in what I said earlier about uh, relative versus absolute, I'm only comparing one relative to the other. Uh, climate conditions, uh, injuries, all these things, uh, weather play a part. But I'm just trying to compare one against the other. So we'll delve in a little bit more into the data in order for me to be able to make a reasonable conclusion as to which is the fastest shoe for me to run a marathon in. When you drill into the data and the stride foot pod data is there, you can see that uh, in the sky I had 199 steps per minute and 1.28 meter average stride length. And in the edge I had 205 steps per minute and 1.24 meters average stride length. Now What's interesting about that is, is that ASICs do say that in the sky it's trying to lengthen your stride. Uh, what I take out of that is, is that I was running harder in the edge. Now I don't know if I was or I wasn't, I was going as hard as I could, but, but I was getting more cadence in the edge than I was in the sky. Now again, this is a limited data set, but I, you know, I, I, I've got to start somewhere. So my reading of this data, and you might have a totally different reading, but my reading of this data is, is that I'm going to run the marathon faster in the sky. It's going to, um, I'm going to have a longer stride length and uh, exactly what ASICs say, I think, is that I should be less tired, famous last words, towards the end of the run uh, than I would be in the edge. So that is the shoe that I'm going to go up against the Alpha Fly uh, next week to see which one I'll actually run the marathon in. These are both great shoes um, and this is an inexact science. Um, but I do like what uh, they're trying to do, ASICs. I think the idea of one concept, two shoes, it's really good because when you're trying to compare one thing to another, one of these things is not like the other, uh, you're, you're trying to get as much of the similarities like the, the upper structure, the color, the aesthetics and all that. If they're all equal, you can just analyze the differences. Um, I do find it hard to know whether I would likely be a stride or cadence and which shoe is which, except by doing my own data set, um, which does seem to support ASIC's idea that the bouncier shoe is more likely for me to spring me forward. I think the idea of the cadence shoe, the edge, is that you can, you can get that cadence change much more quickly. I think that's their idea. What I think would be really useful is if they made a shoe or some manufacturer made a shoe and said, look, this one is targeted at four foot strikers. This one's targeted at midfoot strikers, and I realize I need three shoes now, and one at heel strikers, or predominantly. I think that would be interesting. And perhaps these shoes under a different name are doing exactly that. Should you buy this shoe? Well, I think, yeah. I mean, I, I clearly bought the two of them. Uh, I think you need more data of your own to try and find out which is the one to buy. But personally, I think the Sky is the one for me. Uh, so you might be out doing more tests, seeing the park for them gut busters. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, it'd be great if you hit the like button. And there'll be lots of stuff in the links below and I love all the questions in the comment section. Uh, happily answer any of those. Uh, there'll be a blue subscribe button there and some related videos there. Thanks for watching. Till the next video, just keep running along.